There's many people that have claimed to invent the propeller. This little blog post is going to have a look at some of the key players. Hello, this is Dr. Rod Sampson from King Propulsion, looking into a brief history of the marine propeller. Uh, one of the great things about running a blog on King Propulsion is that I get to share thoughts and ideas and cool stuff on data that I find, and it serves me well. As a wandering academic and a curious engineer, I would ask if there's another type, I'm always fascinated by the world around me and always wondering how things can be done different, or even better. I will confess that the joy of solving puzzles, little puzzles, and as someone once put it to me, doesn't really resonate with me. Uh, my brain simply doesn't work that way. Uh, rather, the ingenuity behind the solving the problem. Now that's where we have something. So I get to matters at hand. For many years, I used to lecture at Newcastle University in the UK, uh, mostly doing my PhD. It was to supplement my income and well, getting some experience. I did enjoy it, I would say. Uh, if you've ever presented a paper at a conference, it's it's kind of like that, but the audience are trying to stay awake from partying the night before. Well, that can be also true of conferences. Not always thrilled to be there. I know hydrodynamics is not terribly popular with marine engineers. And it's also, for the most part, thankless. Uh, for a conference to spend hours crafting a presentation, give it, to, give it your all and receive comments and praise at the end, even if it's only the applause and the small audience who showed up. For lecturing, the work is done the same, but the students don't really get what it is they are getting or how much they will use it later in life, and seem to want to get the credits and move on. Reading back this, I guess, does sound a little cynical, but really it was not that the case for me. Uh, once the knowledge that the class filed out faster than an academic heading to a buffet was accepted, I had fun, and I tried to make my courses engaging. So this next segment on propeller history was one such part of my course. There really wasn't any one person who did invent the propeller, that's a little spoiler alert for you there. As you can see on the screen, there's many types there. But it was, but lots claim the accolade. Uh, so if it goes well, I'll put some more topics out there just to help everyone on various aspects of naval architecture. Uh, I do find there's a bit of a gap in all this, so maybe this will help. And just really, just uh, I'd like to say some a note of thanks to Prof Atler from Newcastle University uh, who encouraged me to uh, do the lecturing in the first place and many other benefits um, of things in my life. Um, so in terms of propulsion, I think it's common knowledge that from the earliest times, people have been faced with the problem of transport across the surface of the water. From the use of hand to the use of the paddle, little development has occurred in ship propulsion until that of the, the steam engine, when naval architects, was it was a game changer for them, and ships could sail into the wind rather than uh, with the wind. There's an old English saying that any propeller will propel any ship, and this is possibly because of the truth that of this statement is that there have been so many patents for propulsive devices, uh, for no matter how revolutionary the design, some measure of success was always assured. And as a consequence of this, we have fishtail propellers, duck foot shaped propellers, perpetual sculling machines, multi-turn screws, and even propellers of variable pitch diameters. And on the screen at the moment, it's been there a little while, I apologize, uh, you've got some of the key players. Uh, SS Great Britain is the red propeller with a model test in the middle. Uh, Ericsson's propeller uh, in the left-hand side. Uh, Charlotte Dundas, which is kind of the first paddle ship. And then just kind of an evolution of from the 1800s to the 1900s, the shape of the blades. So most, novel produce, most of the novel propulsive devices are now extinct from, from days of yore. And most of the purchase ships operating on the trade routes of the world are fitted with fixed pitch screw propellers. New designs and new methods of energy recovery are changing the design of propulsors. And we see potted propellers, top left, and the design of propulsors, as we can see, potted propulsors, whoops, excuse me, and energy saving devices like PBCFs. Um, kind of think of them as like fancy propeller nuts with uh, little wings on that help the flow. Um, guide vanes to feed the flow into the propeller and so on being introduced. But I get ahead of myself. So, as you can see from the last this slide, there really are all sorts of shapes and sizes of propeller. These two are very different types. Um, so let's go back to that one. The bronze coated propeller on the left is optimised to be quiet, while the red one on the right is optimised for ice. Very, very different mission profiles. And I hopefully I will explain this in the coming posts and shed some light on things like why do aircraft propellers and ship propellers differ, which is the best propeller for my boat, and so on. So to do that, I need to start somewhere a bit odd. Uh, from this side, yep, there we go. Uh, you can see a simple sculling method of propelling a, sh a boat, wiggling the oar behind to make a pattern in the water, not too dissimilar to that of a flag in the wind. So those furls on the flags are swirls 
I call it in the air, are called vortices that cause pressure changes and they create lift. It's a tough concept to grasp without proof, but if you think of the wind on the pole and how it's able to shake it side to side, even as the wind hits it perpendicular to the pole, in a nutshell, that's the basics of propulsion and how the sculling boat is able to move, except for sculling, you use the pole to move the water and not the water to move the pole. Um, again, on the slide there, you can just see the flag. You can see the ruffles in the flag. And actually what's happening below is called a, a von Karman street. Uh, you get the a, a change in pressure on either side. And this is something that occurs naturally in nature. If you can see the, the picture lower bottom right, you'll see cloud formations going past an island. So it's a completely natural phenomenon and it is absolutely fascinating. But we'll, we'll come back to that in um, further blog posts. So let me extend the idea a little further. Um, as aircraft wings and a propeller blade have so much in common, but people don't generally get it. Uh, the aircraft wing generates lift through forward speed, and the propeller does this as well, but it's restricted to rotating rather than the linear motion of aircraft flight. So have you ever put your hand outside of a car window? Uh, you can feel the effect of lift and drag super easy. You should give it a try. Uh, put your hand, your hand will be aligned to the floor, to the wind, and it will not do anything. So you can kind of get it so that the hand stays where it is. We call this the zero lift angle, and it's important in propeller design. It's a starting point uh, when you're setting the pitch of your newly designed blade. Then you tip your fingers up and your hands pulled up. Your fingers down, your hands pulled down. This is known as lift, a phenomenon by creating a change in the flow over and under a surface. A pressure differential, as you call it. As the car gets faster, you'll also feel your arm being pulled back within the wind. So this would be the drag. So with simple methods, it's easy to show the two key components for a propeller to work, lift and drag. So that wraps it up for this post. I'll break down all of these concepts again when I cover them in detail. Uh, the great thing about naval architecture is that the concepts are hard. And once you have those nailed, you can change the world and take on so many ideas. The above is a pretty big one. I do apologise, it's kind of just been a, a quick run through. And I'll move on to more describing these two types of vessel, um, these concepts um, in, in detail uh, in the next couple of posts. But the next post I'll be explaining um, resistance, which is important uh, for ship types. And we're going to just establish what type of vessels we're, I'm going to be talking about, uh, difference between planing craft and displacement craft. And starting the next post is really going to start with the next um, most basic form of propulsion, um, the paddle wheel. So that will be in the next post. But thank you for watching. And that wraps it up for this post. Uh, please get in touch if you've got any comments. Uh, my email is rodericksampson at kingpropulsion.com. Uh, you can follow us on our blog at kingpropulsion.com, Twitter at kingpropulsion, and our Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash kingpropulsion. Thank you till next time.